Welcome to another episode of Grow Deep with Miss Erica. This week, Miss Erica is dressed like a goat because the Bible story we're looking at has two goats in it. All right, let's get started. <laughs> this week, be sure to read Leviticus 16 together as a family. Mom and Dad, you can find fun, creative ways to explore Leviticus 16 with your kids at home in your parent email. Open it up and click on the Respond Together button. There you'll find crafts, games, and bonus activities that all go along with Leviticus 16. So you can read the chapter as a family and then do one or two of these bonus activities together. We will also explore Leviticus 16 together in God's Garden on Sunday. Remember, the Israelites have been camping at Mount Sinai for one year. There, they have been building the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a very special tent. God wanted to live right in the middle of all the people. And so, when the people were afraid to come into God's presence, God said that he would move in to the Israelite camp in a special tent called the tabernacle. The tabernacle is finally finished. So God's Holy Spirit, his presence, moves in. The book of Leviticus gets a bad rap sometimes. Some people think it's boring or confusing, but it's actually my favorite book in the whole Bible. There are all of these instructions on how the Israelite people are supposed to celebrate their holy days. There's rules for how the priests should act and dress. There's instructions on how to make sacrifices. And all of these things point to Jesus. The whole book of Leviticus is about how people can finally live in God's presence. But then, actually, if we rewind a bit, at the end of Exodus, there's this weird story. The Bible says that Moses can't go into the tabernacle. And then, once we're in Leviticus, we find this story in Leviticus 10, where two of Aaron's sons try to go into the tabernacle but they don't obey God's rules about how to go in. And actually, once they get inside, they die. It's a really cool story. Big kids, you can check it out in Leviticus 10. I got my friends, Charlotte, Kyle, and Elliot, to read to us from Leviticus 16, where God is reminding Moses what happened to Aaron's two sons. Take it away, guys. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they drew near before the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brothers not to come any, at any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat that is on the ark, so that he may not die, for I will appear in a cloud over the mercy seat. But in this way, Aaron shall come into the holy place with a bull from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and shall have the linen undergarment on his body. And he shall tie the linen sack around his waist and wear the linen turban. These are all holy ones. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. And he shall take the congregation of the people of Israel, two male goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. Thanks, guys. Both of these stories can seem kind of weird to us. The whole point of building the tabernacle was so that God could come and live with his people. So why does the Bible have a story about somebody not being able to go in to the tabernacle? And then why does the Bible include another story about people going in and then dying because they don't go in correctly? God is wanting his people to understand a very important lesson. Sin is what keeps people out of God's presence. That's why these stories are included in the Bible. God is teaching the Israelite people that coming into his presence is a big deal. And if you come into God's presence with sin, it's not going to end well. We saw that with Aaron's sons. 
And so Leviticus 16 is all about how the Israelite people could come into God's presence in a way that was safe for them, in a way where they could enjoy his presence. God isn't content to have the Israelite people not deal with their sin. God knows that sin is a very big deal. He doesn't want the Israelite people to avoid their sin or to hide it or to pretend they don't have any. Instead, God gives them Leviticus 16, these instructions in the Day of Atonement, as a way to deal with all the Israelite sin in the whole camp, once and for all, every year. Because God knew that sin is what keeps people out of his presence. Sin is what keeps us out of God's presence, too. Usually, we don't like to talk about our sin. We like to pretend that we don't have any sin. Or we lie about what we've done or hide our sin. Or sometimes we pretend that our sin is someone else's problem. But God wants to deal with our sin once and for all. That's why he sent Jesus. God knows that our sin keeps us out of his presence. So God sent his son Jesus to die for us once and for all, to deal with all the sin of everyone on the whole world. And now we don't have to rely on a goat or a priest to make a sacrifice for us to deal with our sin. All we have to do is make Jesus our king and he gets rid of our sin. He forgives it completely once and for all. Sin is what keeps you and me out of God's presence, but God has already created a way to completely deal with our sin and get rid of it through Jesus. This week, you will need two oven mitts and a piece of candy in a wrapper. You're gonna play a minute to win it game with your family. If a bunch of people wanna play, you need a piece of candy for everybody who wants to play. You'll also need something to keep time with, like your phone or even a timer from a game. Hold on, I'll be right back. Like this. When it's your turn, put on the oven mitts. Then take your piece of candy and have somebody else in your family set the timer for one minute. When they say go, try to unwrap your piece of candy in a minute with your oven mitts on. It's super hard, guys, because no matter how hard you try, the oven mitts keep getting in the way. They keep you away from that piece of candy. See if anybody in your family can actually get the candy unwrapped with your oven mitts on. When you're done, sit on the couch and snuggle. You can enjoy that candy and talk together about the sin that keeps you out of God's presence. Maybe when you hurt your brother and sister, it's harder for you to listen to God or pay attention to him. Maybe when you lie to your mom or you don't do your chore, it's harder for you to worship or to talk to Jesus at night. Talk together as a family also about what Jesus has done, how Jesus came and died and took away all of your sin. So now if you've made Jesus your king, you get to be in God's presence every single day. There's no sin anymore that keeps you out of God's presence. If you haven't made Jesus your king, talk about why not with your mom and dad. What are your questions you have? When do you think you'll be ready? What's holding you back from doing it today? Talk together as a family about why and when you think you might be ready to make Jesus your king. What I love about this is that sin, like these oven mitts, keeps us away from something awesome like God's presence. But Jesus has already made a way to completely get rid of our sin. So now we can be in God's presence. All we have to do is make Jesus our king. All right, guys, it's been so fun hanging out with you. Thanks for watching another episode of Grow Deep with Miss Erica. I can't wait to see you guys on Sunday. We're going to have a large group at 1030 a.m. at Marshall High School in Tyson's and at the Doubletree Hotel in Pentagon City at 11 a.m. in Arlington. I can't wait to see you guys there. I'm excited to see all of your faces and to explore Leviticus 16 with you guys in God's garden. All right, bye.
Also, heads up, in May, we're going to have a baptism service at Tyson's and at Arlington. So kids, if you have already made Jesus your king, but you haven't got baptized, why not? Come on out. We would love to have you get baptized. It's a great way of you standing up in front of your whole church and saying, I have made Jesus my king. It's really cool. And if you want to learn more about getting baptized, we're going to have a class for guys and you can sign up online. In that class, you're going to hang out with Miss Erica and we're going to learn why people have been getting baptized for 2,000 years who have made Jesus their king. We'll explore it together. We might even baptize some plastic dinosaurs together. I can't wait to see you guys there. If you're interested in learning more about baptism, be sure to talk to your mom and dad and have them sign up for the class online. Bye. Bye.